in my environment. Thank you, God, and we worship you for your presence in our midst. Give you all the glory, we give you all the praise. Pray, oh God, that you have your way in our midst as we go into your word and let your will alone be done. Revive us, oh God, in Jesus' name we pray. Today is the second day of the revival. We thank God for how it has been so far. Let us go to our text, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And the theme for the revival is Jesus, the divine helper. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Can someone read for us? And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. For the fishermen were gone out of death and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's. And prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let your net for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, you have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, when and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets brake, and they began unto and they began unto their partners, which were in other sheep, that they should come and help them. And they came and feed both the sheep, so that they began to sleep. When Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the drought of the fishes, which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zedede, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their sheep to the land, they forsook all and followed him. Thank you, sir. We'll be coming back to this text at the end of this little message. But I want us to look at the divinity of Christ and Christ as the helper. Let's turn our Bible to Exodus 21, verse 24. The divinity of Christ. It says, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Let's not close that page. Let's also go back. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 45. Let us see something there. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 45. So Christ is speaking here, he said, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be the sons of your father who is in heaven. 
So from here, God was speaking in Exodus. He said, tooth for tooth, eye for eye, foot for foot. And Christ, you can see what he said here. He said, you have heard it, but I say to you. Now I was going through this passage in my quiet time one day and it hit me. It's like, Christ. Imagine our president, president of Nigeria, Buhari. He gives a certain law in Nigeria. And after maybe some months, you see me on the TV and I'm like, yes, you heard this law. But now I'm saying this. What would you do? All that will go through your mind is like, this person is a madman, or he's lying, or he's the president's son, or something, maybe. So that's why the Pharisees were, they were mad at Christ. They were like, who is this capital son? Telling us things, things that we've never heard before. So if, when we go deep into the word of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we see indeed who Christ is. We're not done with the divinity of Christ, but let's go to Christ as the helper. Psalm 1 to 1, verse 1 and 2. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So if you can turn to me to Romans 11, verse 33, 36, We'll go through some scriptures in the New Testament to see the Lord who made heaven and earth. Romans 11, verse 33, 36, it says, All the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might repay. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Let's go to Colossians 1 verse 12 to 17. Colossians 1 verse 12 to 17. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Let's go to John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 and 14. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of the only Son, begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now let's go to our text, the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 1 and 11. Now the scripture has told us who Christ is. You know the scriptures are infallible. Every word of God is God breathed inspired by God, every word. Now, before we read Luke 5 verse 11, let's read some verses before Luke chapter 5. And that's Luke chapter 4, verse, verses 40 to 44. 
Luke chapter 4, verse 40 to 44, it says, Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of men, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well. For I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Now we'll read only Luke chapter 5, verse 1 and 11. Only 1 and 11. Verse 1 says, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And verse 11 says, And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. You know, before they left their boats on the land, they were sad. They were not happy. Why? Because they did not catch fish. But that was not their problem. Those truth um, true ig because of ignorance. I will say that. Because of ignorance. They didn't know what their problem was. That's why when God asked um, Adam, said, how did you know that you were naked? That you are naked and did you eat from that fruit? Adam did not answer any of those questions. He answered the second, but the answer he gave was, what did he give? He said, the woman whom you gave to me, I think deceived me or something like that, and I ate. So why did he answer the first question? How did you know you were naked? How are we sure? Why do you think the problem you don't have peace is because maybe mm, let me not use um, pocket money or school fees. Maybe because you're not yet married. Something like that. I don't think that's the problem. Because from scripture we see that once the heart of man is transformed by the power of God. All things are made new. Everything. When Christ was revealed to the disciples, to Peter and the rest, they left everything. People were looking for fish all night. After gathering the much they could, they left it and followed him. So that's what happens when Christ is revealed to a man. I know of a missionary in the US, before he became a missionary, he was studying law to become the best lawyer in the US. But he encountered Christ, or rather Christ encountered him. And when he graduated, he dropped his certificate and became a missionary. Suffering. He was speaking one day, he said, if you know your next meal, you're a very rich man. If you know what you're eating next, he has stayed with. He has stayed with poor, but let me not say he has stayed with poor people. But he has peace, joy. Why? Christ has been revealed. And he might be, everyone might mock him now. But the day is coming when everything, every suffering, everything will be like never happened. So once Christ is revealed to us, by the Holy Spirit alone, through the Word of God alone, by our faith. I'm sure that's all we need. That's all man needs. Transformation of the heart. So I don't know what we've gotten from this. But I'd like us to bow our heads and just pray one prayer point. Let's ask God that according to his mercies, can we stand up? Can we rise up, please?
Let's cry out to God. According to the abundance of his mercies. According to the abundance of his mercies. Let Christ be revealed to us. Revealed in our hearts. That we may come to know him indeed. <laughs>